Amen. Come on, put your hands together and give God a praise. Come on, come on, come on. God woke you up this morning and he started you on your way. You have every reason. Amen. To celebrate God's goodness and God's wonderful mercies. We welcome you to our fourth Sunday of worship. Our youth are in charge. We honor God and we praise God for their participation in worship today. We solicit your prayers for them on today. Sister Aubrey McDuffie is our worship leader. Won't you stand to your feet as we join together in singing. Praise God for more, more blessings floor.
thank you for this day, for this moment, for the opportunity to come together and worship and receive your word. I ask that you bless our homes, families, friends, and those we do not know that need you in their lives. I pray for healing for all that are sick in body, mind, or spirit. Please help us to help, love, and forgive others. Give us strength when we are weak. My God, please protect the children and put someone in their lives that will help them to come to know you. Please help the parents that do not yet know you. Please bless my church family and my Godfather. May all know the greatest love is the love of God. In the holy name of Jesus, I thank you. Amen. Love is patient. Love is kind. 
It is not envy. It is not bruised. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not evil. Anger. It keeps no records of wrong. Love does not deny in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It also protects, also truths, also hopes, also preserves, loves, and perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are conferences, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be still. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. But we know in part a prophecy in part, but when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the way of childhood behind me. The word of God will be given. Amen. If you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father that he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. The Spirit of truth, the world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not give you your office, I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me, because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has, whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. Thank you, and please be seated.
We can do better than that. I want to show your love to Brother Jaden Watkins for your very fine words of welcome today. I know you already felt welcome when you were walking through those double doors. Amen. Because Island Chapel is a warm place of worship. Amen. And we are grateful to God for the opportunity to be able to worship. Amen. In person. And those who are joining us live streaming, we praise God. These will make sure that our young people are prepared to be able to serve in worship. Well, brothers and sisters, these are beautiful water flowers that you see here. Uh, these have been given by Sister Joanne Johnson, and they are given in honor of her mother, uh, Mrs. Uh, Elizabeth Johnson, also known as Queen. Amen. So let's bless God for Sir John Johnson for having met him. He makes us in the life of our church. We are always uh, also grateful to God for our members who have celebrated their birthday since the last time we gathered together. Brother Rufus Johnson celebrated his birthday on June the 20th. Sister Marion Freeman celebrated her birthday on June the 21st. Sister Monica Hardley celebrated her birthday on June the 21st. Brother Randall Richardson celebrated his birthday on June the 21st. Sister Glenda Button celebrated her birthday on June the 21st. And Dr. Jerry Packer Jr. celebrated his birthday on June the 24th. Come on, put your hands together for all of our several birthdays. We have a great time again. And we pray God's continuous blessings upon their lives. I see we have a few people who are going on a trip, amen, a heritage tour to Washington, D.C. Amen. May I ask all those persons to please stand and see a few preachers. Uh, Amen. Pastor Harold Dennison, the Reverend Wyatt, the Reverend Nassi, the Reverend Kimberly Stockton, the Reverend Dr. Carol Shine, and their members, and all the wonderful members of our, uh, of, of the, the Torah District. We praise God for you. Our presiding y'all that is a, a multi purpose and a consultant. They're trying to tap some of those things. We are leaving out immediately after 12 o'clock. Uh, headed to Washington, D.C. We're asking for your prayers that as we travel on this heritage tour, that God will indeed bless us and that we'll have a great experience. Amen. Beloved, let me ask you to uh, please remember to pray for those who stand in need of our prayers. Remember to lift up Sister Joan Johnson, who still having health. These are prayers. And it's something I support, continue to pray for Sister Phyllis Davis, who's 96 years old. And the Lord is still keeping her around, praying for good health in her life. Remember to pray for Dr. Daniel J. Moore, he may want surgery and he's recovering well. These are prayers in this moment. Also, let me solicit your prayers for those who are in bereavement. Satan to announce the passing of Brother Andrew Roberts, who transitioned to glory this past Friday, June the 23rd. The family is making preparation for the ongoing celebration for July the 8th. Amen. And they are the wake on 
July the 7th, right here at the church from 5 until 7 p.m. Please lift up Sister Donna Roberts, who stands in need of our prayers. Lift up Sister Tristan Johnson, Amen. Sister Tristan Johnson, and Rufus Johnson, as they go through this very, very difficult hour. We are scheduled to have a church conference on Monday, July the 10th at 6 p.m. in multi-purpose. We want to invite all of you on the Kenan Wheel that you will be present as we be like delegates to the electoral college and take care of the business of our church. The Sons of Adam will be following this service right in this area. For the Sons of Adam, the men of Adam, if you will meet quickly uh, with Brother Kenneth Scott for just a brief moment. Uh, I've been told that the Department of Corrections, they are hiring. Amen. Department of Corrections, they are hiring. Brother Roger that works for the Department of Corrections, and he told me, Reverend, anybody that needs a job to work, amen, he will hook you up. And I studied about, about 21 dollars, I was like 21, 22 dollars an hour, and they will pay for you to go back to school, amen, so, so whatever you need, amen, as long as you don't have, uh, uh, <laughs> I had to ask him a lot to make sure. You may have some minor stuff and all that, but they can work it out, amen. But you can see him, amen. He has worked for the Department of Corrections for many years and all that, and uh, he knows what goes on on the inside. So, so there's no reason for you not to work, amen. He will help you, amen. So we bless God and we honor God for all of you. Brother Grant, when we gather together, we do not come in the presence of God in time. But we come with our gifts because we realize that everything that we have, God gave it to us. And here at Island Chapel, we are always celebrating you during our time of giving because we realize that the Lord has been good to us. The Lord has blessed us beyond the nation. So as we now prepare for our giving, let me invite Brother Ron Davis if you come quickly and just share briefly. Oh, no. August the 13th, 2023. The chairperson for our men's day this year is Brother Kenny Scott and Reverend Tyrese Menegal. As always, before our special days, we have a, a press service. And our press service is this Friday at 7 p.m. And it will be via Zoom. So please look for your emails this week. Uh, Sister Tiki will be sending that information out to you. Um, as always, our goal is two hundred is twenty thousand dollars. We ask each uh, member to give an uh, uh, offering of two hundred dollars for that day. And we know that this is Ben's day, but ladies, we can't do it without you. So, as always, we know that you are going to um, support us. So again, press service is this Friday at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Thank you. Amen. And that will be our kickoff prayer service so we can seek the presence of God and the blessings of our God during our celebration for Men's Day. This time, love, as we prepare to share the joy of giving, uh, let me ask you that you will join us in giving. You can go to Giveify and share. You can go to Zell and share with your gifts. Amen. You are in the house of the Lord. It's a reverend. I came to church today. I don't have my cash. I don't have my checkbook. But I do have my debit card. Amen. So Celia Harris is back in the back. She'll be able to assist you to be able to share in giving using your debit card or your credit card. Or you can use the envelopes. Amen. And be able to share in the joy of giving. Amen. As we're prepared to give after the ministers have shared we we'll invite everybody to come, both sides using the other hours that you'll come and share. Our stools are now coming as we prepare to share. Amen. Our music ministry will give us a suitable selection. Amen. As we share in the joy of all of giving. <laughs>
to the door double duty. Amen. The door the streaming and the singing at the same time. Amen. We just bless God that we are watching the people. We have a lot of some of us because the summer months we have a lot of people that are traveling, a lot of engagements going on. But we praise God that people are willing to make themselves available to serve. Beloved, it's now preaching time. It's preaching time when we we have a preacher in the house who's one of those stranger to Allen Chapel. The Reverend Carver Richards came to Allen Chapel. Gifted brother. Amen. Gifted brother. Uh, the Reverend Carver Richards was born and raised in Jamaica. The man came to the United States as a student. The man and uh, just got involved in the work of the ministry where he served in many areas. Uh, he was an associate minister at some point. city, which is Miami, and uh, a good friend and a classmate, uh, the Reverend Dr. Robert Jackson, and then he got offered a job to serve as um, uh, the director of the Costa Corral at the Thinkin University, where he's doing remarkable work. Amen. 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 Just bless God that He continues to touch the, the lives of the young people on the campus of Bethel Cookman. It's not a list of music, but it's also engaged in our collegiate ministry here at Island Chapel Amen. that we can continue to impact the lives of our young people, not just at Bethel Cookman University, but also at Denver Riddle, even the Torah State. Because we believe that those young people deserve to be able to hear the good news in the midst of everything that is going on in our world today. They need to be encouraged and reminded that God is still in control. That God is still in charge. So we praise God that he was willing, amen, to be the mouthpiece that God would use on this whole Sunday. To be able to pour into our lives and to speak the word in our lives. Good and preacher as he is. He's a worshiper. He's, a, he's excited about the things of God. But as good and preacher as he is, he cannot preach until the real preacher comes. So let us look at your prayers today. And uh, will you extend your hands towards him and repeat after me? Reverend Richards, we need to hear from the Lord. We need a word from God. We pray that God will use you today. In Jesus, name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. After the next selection by the praise team, the next one you will hear is that of the Reverend uh, Kaba Reaches our uh, message. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take
morning and offer up to God and our dignified praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the great things that God has done. Amen. 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 And amen. Hallelujah. Listen, y'all. When we wake up in the morning and we come on a Sunday to worship God, that is really what we've come to do, to worship God in spirit and in truth. Reverend McGall, thank you so much for the, you call it an invitation to preach. Uh, when your pastor calls you, it's not an invitation. <laughs> and so we follow the divine assignment that's given to all of us. When God invites you to praise him, it's not an invitation, no. God demands and God commands that we praise him. All right? And so, um, don't, don't miss your blessing uh, because of invitations, but just do what it is that God has called us to. There is a word from God this morning, and the word is going to come to us from the book of Isaiah. And so, you know, if you have your Bibles, pull out your Bibles, and yes, I know I have you standing. Um, there's a reason for it. <laughs> pull out your Bibles, the book of Isaiah. Let's go to God in prayer. Eternal gracious God, we thank you so much that even if we didn't open our mouths this morning to give you praise, you've already done enough, God. Yeah. That God, even if we didn't open our mouths, your word says that the rocks will cry out for us, God. God, we thank you that the sun, the moon, and the stars have already praised you today. Yeah. God, we thank you that your creatures, all of them, birds, fishes, have given you glory. God, we thank you that the trees this morning have swayed under the Spirit has swayed in the wind this morning. And so now, God, we call the Holy Spirit in each of one of us, God, to let us worship you as all your created creatures do in Jesus' name. Have your way in this word. Speak to us, God, only as you can speak, God. Move stony hearts right now. Crush all those hard places that refuse to let your word enter in, God. In the name of Jesus, any rebellious spirit, God, that would try to block this message, God, we pray that you have your way, God. God, if there's any pride in this house today, God, God, that you will humble us, God, that you might later on exalt us, God. God, we were the created and not the creator. So, God, we come to you right now humbly. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. To you, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. If you would, again, open up your Bibles to the book of Isaiah. I'll be reading for your hearing the entire chapter. This is perhaps one of the shortest uh, chapters in Isaiah. And hear ye the word of the Lord. Woe to you. Woe to thee that spoilest Woe unto thee. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many and in horsemen because they are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. Yet he also is wise and will bring evil and will not call back his words, but will arise against the house of the evildoers and against them that help work iniquity. Now the Egyptians are men and not God. And their horses, flesh, and not spirit. When the Lord shall stretch out his hand, both he that help shall fall, and he that is helped shall fall down, and they all shall fail together. For thus the Lord spoken unto me, like as the lion and the young lion roaring on his prey, 
When a multitude of shepherds is called forth against him, he will not be afraid of their voice, nor abase himself for the sound and noise of them. So shall the Lord of hosts come down to fight for Mount Zion and for the hill thereof. As birds flying, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. Defending it, he will also deliver it. And passing over it, he will preserve it. Turn ye unto him from whom the children of Israel have deeply revolted. For in that day, every man shall cast away his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which your own hands have made. Then shall the Assyrian fall with the sword, not of a mighty man, and the sword, not of a mean man, shall devour him. But he shall flee from the sword, and his young men shall be discomforted. And he shall pass over to his stronghold for fear, and his princes shall be afraid of the sign, saith the Lord, whose fire is in Zion and his furnace in Jerusalem. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. May be seated in the presence of an almighty God. For all of the Bible scholars, and we have a lot of pastors that tell me that all these pastors will be here, um, all these judges, all these NAACP presidents, all these principals, all these leaders in their groups. He didn't tell me that. He just asked me to give you a message, right? Uh, but a message for today, if you are taking notes, trust in God alone. Amen. If I were to be honest, and if you are to be honest, as good as we look this morning, all of us have fallen in times where we have needed help. In fact, some of you might very well be in that place right now. On the outside, you look confident and poised and relaxed and self-assured, but on the inside, you're teeming with doubt. You're teeming with worry. You're teeming with frustration. You're teeming with depression, you're teeming with anxiety, all these things that we don't see. All of us have found ourselves in a place needing help. Amen. In our text, the writer Isaiah tells us that the Israelites are facing a very interesting situation. And not to bore you with the details of the story, imagine this. We are here in Daytona Beach. And to the north of us is Ormond, and to the north of us is Palm Coast. And the Ormondians and the Palm Coastians are a ruthless set of people who are coming down to Daytona to capture Daytona and to make Daytona its own. Now, Daytona, y'all, we don't really like the people down in New Smyrna. Right? We don't really like the people down in Port Orange because if the truth be told, the people in New Smyrna and in Port Orange they held us captive for 400 years. The people in Port Orange and New Smyrna forced us to work and to labor for free, to labor for free, and to labor for free. They forced us to build skyscrapers out of mud. They force us to make gourmet meals out of grass. They force us to make hospitals out of nothingness. And so Isaiah sets up the story that here it is that Israel sees the Assyrians, a great and mighty people who have come to destroy what God has done. And the northern Israelites succumbed to the Assyrians because they did not trust 
in God alone. They trusted in the might of politicians. They trusted in the might of wise men and wise women. They trusted in riches. They trusted in idols. And the Assyrians came and wore them out. <laughs> and here we are in Judah, seeing them come. We have the remembrance that for 400 years we were in bondage. We have the remembrance that for 400 years we could not live as equal citizens of a world that the God that we serve created for us. Yet as trouble comes, the Israelites don't look to God for help. The Israelites break their allegiance with God and look towards the south. They're no longer looking to the hills from whence come at their help. They're no longer looking up to God, but they're looking down to the south. And they're looking down to Egypt for help. They're looking for help in the places that held them captive. They're looking for help from the addictions that held them captive. They're looking for help from the conditions that stop them from being able to be what God has called them to be. And so Isaiah sets up this story, even though it was for them, that still resonates with us even today. Because the question that comes to us is, to whom do you go first for help? When your back is pressed against the wall, you know how they say your money's looking funny and your what? Change is what? Strange, right? When your your health is on the line, when your children are acting up, when your grandchildren are acting up, when the other people are acting up, who is the first one that you go to for help? Now, I hear you saying hallelujah, and I hear you saying thank you, Jesus. But the truth is, if you were to examine ourselves, all of us know Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Yes? Yes. Every one of us knows Jehovah Rapha, what? Our healer. Yes? Everyone knows Jehovah Nisi, the one who reigns in victory. We've been praying every Sunday, Jehovah Gemola, the one who rewards. But God calls us to acknowledge him as the Holy One. You see, a lot of times we find ourselves acknowledging and trusting in God only for the things that God can do for us. We only trust in God because he provides. We only trust in God because he Heals. We only trust in God because He reigns in victory. But do we trust in God because God is holy? God says His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And so, point one: trust in God for who God is. You see, when you trust in God for who God is, you're not concerned about what your neighbor to the right is doing. And you're not concerned about what your neighbor to the left is doing because we know that God is a just God. That God is an omnipotent God. God sees everything and God can do everything. And so it's for you to trust God for who he is. Point number two. Trust God. Trust God. Seek him while he might be found. In verse 1 it says, Woe to those who go down to Egypt for help, who rely on horses, who trust in multitude of chariots, and in their great strength or horsemen, but do not look to the Holy One of Israel or seek help from God. Y'all, I know we're good at this, and we think that God owes us a visit. I know we're, we're, we're good Methodists and we, we do all the things that our 
discipline and doctrine calls us to do. But the question today comes, do you seek God? God isn't that praise and worship song that you don't like. Do you find God in music that doesn't suit your taste? God is in the scriptures that you don't read. Do you seek to find God? God is in the discomfort and uncomfortable relationships that you have. Do you seek God? God is in every disease that afflicts your body. Do you seek God? God is in every moment of poverty and lack. Do you seek God? I'm here to tell you that God is the one who created good, but God is the one who created evil. And evil isn't what we often think that it is. If I were to ask you a question, how many of us praise God when things are good? Raise your hand. Yeah, not everybody, okay? But the one thing I were to ask, when you get sick, you praise God? Yeah. When, when you can't do what you need to do, do you praise God? Yes. That's the condition of the human heart. That when things are bad, we try to get, get help from God. And so these evil things, these things that come to concern you, these things that come to frustrate you, these things that come to worry you, do know that God's hands are in it. Amen? Amen. Even when things look crazy, God is there. Don't wait for God to find you. You go and see God. In every opportunity when you come to worship, it is important that you find God in every element of worship. And I'm about to tell you why. Because the scripture makes it very clear that God comes and he moves heaven and hell to defend Zion. To defend Zion, to defend his holy hill, to defend those people who have come into the places that he has consecrated for worship of him. And so when you find yourselves being attacked, when you find yourselves um, falling, stumbling, and not understanding why things just aren't shaping up, could it be that you're not worshiping the way you ought to? Could it be that you are not always positioning yourself in Mount Zion on that holy hill where God will move mountains to protect you? The psalmist says in Psalm 3 that many are they that trouble me. Many are they that rise up against me. Many are they that say of my soul, there is no help for you in God. But thou, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. You want to have glory, you want to have your head lifted. Y'all gotta keep yourselves in the presence of God. Keep yourselves on that holy hill. Keep yourselves in that spiritual Jerusalem. But know that God is not going to come looking for you. Amen. You have to seek God. The Hebrew word for seek, le devoir, is not like a, a hide and seek. Right? It's not like a peekaboo. Right? <laughs> that, that seek is a deliberate exclusive like you're not looking for nothing else right it's not a you're gonna find him by happenstance you have to actually deliberately go out looking for god with purpose and with intention point number three trust god trust god and trust in god alone trust in his desire to bless you and not to harm you his desire to lift you up and not to crush you. You may be persecuted, but it's not unto death. You may be sick today, but it's not unto death. 
You may be tired today, but it's not on to death. And so the question is, how do we put God as priority in our life? How do you put God as priority in your life? The only way to do that is to be in the presence of the Almighty God. The only way to do that is to rely solely on what his word says. You see, we sing all these songs and we don't believe it, y'all. Time is filled with swift transitions. Things might be good today, but no tomorrow, it might be bad. But in all those things, we ought to what? Hold on to God's unchanging hand. God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. What was sin yesterday is sin today. I will be sin tomorrow. Seek God. When you know God, you will understand that the God that forgives the adulterer is the God that forgives the gambler. The God that forgives the fornicator is the same God who will forgive the homosexual. The God who forgives the one who cusses and cheats is the same God who's going to forgive the liar. Y'all, I know as enemy church we are caught up in social justice. But we ought to be careful that we not raise up social justice as an idol above an eternal God. That we, we, we protest, yes, but we pray. were held in bondage in Egypt. They groaned and they murmured and they petitioned. They groaned, they murmured, and they petitioned. Not to Pharaoh. They made their pain known. They made the injustice of the world known, but not to Pharaoh. Not to the scientists but to God. Amen. There is no power in a picket. There is no power in a sign. There is only power in Jesus Christ. And so in the church, as we petition and as we protest, let us murmur and groan first unto God. And let God do what God says God will do. Watch Assyria fall down in your life. Not by a human sword, as verse 8 says. Not by a human sword, but by the sword of God. When you put God first and trust in God alone, the Bible says that those things that come against you will look in fear and look in terror and they will fall away and they'll be chased away and you will have to do nothing. I know we want to call out the vote and get all you black people to vote. But if 10 million black people go out and vote and it's not the will of God, your outcome will never happen. Everything that happens in this world, we must believe that God is in it. And so God can cause all the people you don't want to vote to oversleep. God can do that. God can cause a change of heart in people who you think might vote one way. God can do that, right? God can make it in such a way that doors won't open to places. God can do that. Put your trust in God and God alone. You're on your job and your boss is bothering you. Put it to God. Your, your children, they're not listening to you. They're being moved by the ways of this world. Put it to God. Trust in God and trust in God alone. Amen.
and amen. amen. Standing all over the building.
And if there is such a person that needs to meet God in his holy hill in this moment, a moment that might not come again Praise in your life, I invite you to come down to the altar as well. And if there is someone who is looking for a church home, Alan is a good church, y'all. I tested them out. They, 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 their character is all check. They, they pass. These are wonderful people. We're not perfect. No one is. But we all do trust in God and in God alone. And so, again, the doors of the church are open. If there's anyone that wants prayer, you are invited to come down. Freedom to walk 
the way you created us to walk. Freedom to walk in the victory, God, that you are said is ours. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through Christ Jesus. God, we set up a perimeter around each and every person at this altar right now. That Satan, you are now served. That Satan, your plans are now canceled in the name of Jesus. That Satan, you will not have our health. Satan, you will not have our strength, God. Satan, you will not have our might. God, have your way in each and every one of our hearts right now, God. Remind them, God, of all the good things that you've done, God. When our back was against the wall, God, that God, you scattered each and every enemy, God. When our back were against the wall, God, that God, you broke down barriers, God. That when our backs were against the wall, those that could not be done, God, were made fools because you did it. And if you did it in the past, God, we know you can do it again. God, you did us in the past. So, God, we believe right now in the name of Jesus that God, you will heal us, God. That God, you have kept us through many dangerous songs and snares in the past. So now, God, we believe that you can do it right now, God. God, give us the strength, God, to fight cancer, God. Give us the strength, God, right now to fight diabetes, God. Give us the strength, God, to fight every kidney disease. Give us the strength, God, right now to fight neurological diseases now in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, 
walk with us this week, the Holy Spirit, let us not use our mouths to, to say bad things, but Holy Spirit, let us be what you call us to be. Holy Spirit, lead us and guide us, God. Blunt every temptation right now this week in the name of Jesus, God. Holy Spirit, rule, 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 rest of God with us now in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you for each and every person. We thank you for the children. Bless them now. That's only you can. In Jesus' name. Amen.
this place, but never from the presence of God. As always, remember to trust in God alone. And as always, remember to seek God while we can. And as always, remember that if God can do it, it can be done. And so let's please this place with the presence, the spirit, the love, the protection of God be with you now and forever. And we all say together.